Hello, welcome to Next Connections. I'm James Lott Jr. here on JLJ Media, or I am the JLJ of JLJ Media. And here's one of the best things that happens to me. When I get a guest that's word of mouth, not necessarily I had to look them up or find them or try to get them. They actually, I'm here from someone else said I should get in contact with the person who handles his stuff to talk to him. So I love this. This gentleman here, this young man is doing, he has Mind of the Noise Records. He has Beat School with Jim, Mr. J. We're going to talk about both of those things. He's from St. Louis, but he's out here now. He's yes. collaborated with some big people and some names. He's had some experiences. But he also yes. gives back. And you know me, you know, folks, you, I've done this show six years. You know I'm all about giving back. It's one of the, just the best things you can do. We're going to find about that. Help yes. me welcome Jason Harris. Hello, Jason. Yeah, <laughs> like Hello. How you doing? How you doing? Very good. Um, and I want to say, so my friend, Tony Moore, got me in touch with your person, Steve, who said I should. And everybody was like, you should interview this dude. So I said, I and Mike said, well, who is the dude? So they gave me your, your information. I looked you up and I was like, oh, yes, I should. He's right up my, my, my people love this. So welcome awesome. to JLJ Media. Right on. You're Thank an entrepreneur you. and everything. I love it. Uh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start out the gate just with a strong question, and okay. because I know that I like doing research on you, I, I, I have a feeling you have an opinion about this. Yeah, you with your beat school and some of the things you do, you're giving back to the kids, the next generation. Right. So my question to you is, how important is music being helpful in helping our next generation of black and brown kids? It's, it's so important is what we're saying, the tone, the community it creates, um, the word of mouth, everything that goes on is so important. This day and age, um, these kids are so into technology. Technology is taking off. This is a digital game now. And music is the quickest thing to reach the kid right now. And it's a it's a teacher, um, it's it's everything, you know. So like, um, even w going into B school is it was about being mindful of that noise, you know. So I think the kid is so important now because every everybody's learning from it. Word is spreading around. Um, for me. It's helping me with my with my um, uh, comprehension skills. It it helped me find vocabulary words or strengthen my vocabulary skills. It helped me solve problems, um, and it also taught me how to build a community and how to speak and how to stand up and build confidence. You know, so it's very important right now. It is, and I and I feel like you know art. Mm -hmm. It's one of the leaders in um, in expression. Yes. Um, I'll say upheaval, uprising, yeah. um, speaking. I, because, you know, I do spoken word and I produce music also and do that kind of stuff. But I'm telling you, when you said vocabulary, that was the thing. I, I learned because I was into, my brother was a rapper. I was the spoken word. This is back mm -hmm. in the 80s, back in the dinosaur times. Yeah. Um, but it was, but we were told, if you're good in English, my teachers are so smart, you'll know more words to use in your stuff, right? Isn't that funny? Yeah, right. And I remember the same thing. And for me, I was, um, I stayed as a C average student because of just a lack of understanding and just my, you know, everybody starts at a different level, you Thank know. You. What you get, you might get later. You might not get it now. So it don't it doesn't mean that you're not as good as anybody else. It's just you moving at your own beat, um, bar at a time, you know. And I often say too, you know, uh, we take in life one bar at a time, you right. know. And I, I use that with my kids, he, even here at home, and uh, just a reminder to ourselves, you know. And so, yes, yes, I think it's so important that um, music is doing what it's supposed to do right now because you can easily get off track and you're, it would take you to places that, you know, you don't probably feel like you should go. So it's, we got to have somebody there to lead the way. 
Sure. Yeah, no, I know several of you guys who are out there with the with the teenagers and the kids, yeah, music, teaching, smoking, all this stuff. And I think it's, you know, because it's also with the whole thing of schools cutting out arts programs. Yeah. Oh, it's just so upset. Um, yeah. Any thoughts on that, real quick? As we go forward, like, I just, I just I'm so. I mean, like, happening. yeah, um, I don't feel like I feel like we need more in the schools with the arts, you know. Like I, I'm, I have my master's in arts and in and, and music, and it took me over ten years to get into the schools, and and all of it was because it was you had to have you must you had to know somebody that was involved. I didn't have my credentials, but based off my experience, I was still able to teach at Inglewood for middle school um, as a visual performing artist. Um, but yeah, man, it took so long to get in. So long. Uh, ten, uh, 10 years. I mean, I'm in Inglewood. I'm a product of the Inglewood school system. Yeah. So I went to I went to Inglewood High School, went to La Tierra. That's oh. the school I went to. My family, friends went to Sentinella. My mom worked at Oak Street. So I know Inglewood itself. And folks, I know people are like, Inglewood, Inglewood, I know. Um, but I got, I, got a good, I got a good education. I did. Um, and I left and came back. I, now I live back in Inglewood. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it's just, and it's, it's tough because I think, you know, like you said, you have a master's degree in arts. You have you have all that, and still you couldn't just get in and start a program. No, I still couldn't get in and start a program, and I had all these big dreams and how I visualized what um, I wanted to offer to the community through the arts, and um, it just wasn't there for me. It was like I had to go through loops and holes, and I had to just do so much, you know, so all that energy, I just kept pursuing what I wanted to do, surround myself with good people that were better than me or, you know, can strengthen my knowledge in the field I want to go to uh, or be in. And that's, you know, how I got to where I am today. But um, yeah, it's so much like with the arts, you know, I, my, my class was the art of expression, you know, and that was, the first class I did for beat school right. and um, and not to before tapping into beat school, I just had a thing of seeing things different from different perspectives. And since I didn't have the voice I needed, I utilized art to express those things and to tell that story um, while being quiet, you know, and not being quiet ain't, ain't nothing wrong with being quiet either because sometimes you can't hear when you're doing a lot of talking too. You miss a lot of things, you know, and a lot of things that uh, it's a lot of misunderstanding that comes with that too. So I was able to like, you know, soak everything in like a sponge when I walk in a room. It's like, oh, why he's so quiet? And now I'm talking more than I ever talked before, you know, right. not not knowing that I will do that someday. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, no, no, no. I took all the time. Is it time to shut up? Mm-hmm. And time to speak. There's both, and and you have to actively listen. There's a whole other world about active listening. Yes, you have to hear. And when you say active listening, you're watching. You're listening with body language. You're yep. listening with expression. You're listening with what you see, what they're saying in between the lines. But yes. you're, you're being quiet and you're absorbing everything and taking it in. And some people will say, yeah. Some people look at you either be. Well, he's being aloof or he's being, you know, he's being stuck up or he's being, or he's just being right. so shy. And you're mm-hmm. like, that may not even be it. That may not even be it. It's just like, some folks don't need to run their mouth. The folks that run their mouth all the time, you're right. They miss everything. Because they're just busy talking. They're talking at you. Right. Right. I was like, sometimes it's okay to sit back and just kind of like observe and see what's going on. And mm-hmm. then you come out with something strong. You're like, oh, okay, there it is. Right. And you would discover new things with yourself too. Like I I was a painter and I I was into blending colors. So not only did I, you know, spend time doing music, but I spent most of my time doing art and blending, just blending, blending and doing self portraits and landscape drawings and stuff like that. So I was a fast I was fascinated by, you know, architect. And um so 
while doing all that and being in church and playing the organ and playing the drums and stuff, it was all about like, how does this work? You know, I always wanted to figure out how does it work um, and figure out how to utilize it, you know, to my ability to tell a story. Do or you still to, paint? Do you still paint? Yeah, still paint. Um, I still, I still, that was a drawing, actually a charcoal drawing that was up on the, um, on the wall, you know, it was, it's called the big head drawing. And, and that was the name that the teacher gave. He's like, oh, this is the big head drawing. If you can't draw yourself, then you're going to have a hard time drawing somebody else. So we had to master ourselves. And if, if you master yourself the best that you can, then you can do, you can do others, you know. All right, let me ask you a question then on that. That means that requires, because even when you're writing, you're looking within yourself, but to right. paint yourself, you're literally looking at yourself, flaws and whatever you think. Everything. So how did, so how do you, how did you work through that to make a, an accurate portrait of yourself? Oh man, I took, well, I did multiple drawings right. and, and did different perspective drawings of myself. Um, after a while, when you spend multiple times like drawing yourself, yeah, you notice different things like, oh, I just don't look like me. I don't like this part of me and stuff like that. Like, uh, I'm yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I I make, it better. Like, oh. I make it better a little bit. That's how that yeah. like, like, I'm going to no, it up a little bit. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, I think um, that's the excitement, you know, is uh, I always wanted to know, like, I just wanted to get it close to the how I was looking as possible. You know, um, if there was a mistake there, I leave it. You know, what I mean, I didn't change with this drawing. I didn't change anything in this one, you know, and you have realized that when you start changing images within yourself, you're changing who you are, you you. In in today's world, we have a lot of social media sites where people are getting to know people electronically instead of face to face, like how we were growing up. So people depict themselves as, as things that they're not, you know. So I think early on for me, I understood that, you know, if you can master your own image and and build yourself up, you can help build someone else up. And that's how I look at it now. But from an art point of view, it's uh you're you don't you're a master of yourself, you know, with everything that you do, you know. Um, so I've always been cautious. Always been cautious. And um, yeah, man, that's where I'm at. That's I love I'm it. At. Well, no, wait, but the thing is it all ties into your actual being able to help others because you're like, I'm mastering myself right. and self. To yeah. be able to give out, because you can't give out if you have no. nothing in here. So, I mean, like, right. in, so you're like, so you basically you're already you're filling all this up and going, okay, got it. Now mm -hmm. I can pour it back out to to the kids, right. and well, also to your audience when you do music, to your mm -hmm. to, when you do a live performance, to your you know, to, you're giving you we're giving it's exchange, right? It's back and forth, right? And you have to look at it from a bird's point of view you know, bird's eye view of your journey of where you at and figure out how you want to navigate. And I've always, after doing bird's eye view drawings, I've always like tapping in like, okay, this is where I'm at, where, where I'm at, what I'm doing, where do I want to go? Because we're teaching people how to do what we do as we're doing it. And, and that was another thing I wanted to keep in mind if I'm doing this, somebody's watching me. Somebody's learning because I was that person that was in the room in the corner looking, you know, um, if not, I'm hearing something in here like, oh, this is really nice. This is something that I want to try to create, you know. So. Yeah, it's 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 a journey. It's most definitely a journey. Anatomy of a beat. I want to talk about that because I'm kind of like, OK, for you, everybody's different. Everybody's different. Yeah. Some people it's. Like, like, okay, for example, I had a dream, like everybody else, right? Um, and um, that black children and white children, no. Um, I had a dream, and I dreamt this thing called Depressed Horse. I have no idea where it came from. It was, it I woke up and stuck with me. 
So, mm -hmm. I mean, so I, I had these two words. And then a melody started coming to me later while I was awake, like a few days later. Still didn't know what it meant or what was going on. But I'm saying there's, there's, there's like steps for me until I write a song. Yeah. So I want to know from you, what is like for you, I know it's not the same every single time, but it's kind of in general, what starts for you a lot? What, what inspires you to come up with the music you come up with, the beats you come up with? Well, situations and stories and, and um, just things like I, I can be, I could be walking down the street and I hear somebody talk about something and that, and that spark a concept or a thought. And I'd be like, oh, wow. Like this is something that happens on a daily basis. Somebody's talking about something. This is relatable. So I, what I would do is I would go and I do research on that thing. So if somebody said, hey, um, I lost my, my job from a certain type of activity, I'd be like, oh, okay. So how can I build a story off this? And how can I find some inspiration out of it um, to share with people? So some of it comes from my daily, it, it all comes from my daily walk. Okay. okay. Um, uh, for is beats and sounds, you know, man, that comes from everywhere. I can be, I could be in the kitchen and I could hear some clicking. And, <laughs> <laughs> I got a new click. Uh, <laughs> Yes. But you know, um, all my inspiration though, and is is following me is following from church. You know, being in church, all the hymns and all the melodies. I found myself like years later finding the same keys I was playing in the church were the same keys that were led by my music that I put out. Okay. And so, like a lot of people are coming to see you and be like, "Hey, man, you playing like A flat key chords? Like, how you? Yeah. This is different, you know." And I'll be like, "Oh." All for my the the church melodies are all in A flat or G flat C chords and stuff like that, you know. And I was like, wow, you know. So um, that saying, and, and we're taught to bring in good vibes into the church. So right. all of it's good vibes. All of it's bringing in the spirit, right? You know. So I'm being influenced, you know, influenced by that and trying to find a home for that outside of the church, you know, but through my own walk, through my own experience and through all the stories that I, you know, came across too. Yeah. Um, I've done my, a couple of, I've done a couple of Christian dance songs mm -hmm. in my career. Uh, mm -hmm. People like them, they like, they like them, whatever, they're fun. Um, <laughs> but I found, but it was funny though, because like you like said, you know, some people don't realize, I mean, I grew up Catholic, so you just you kind of just get up, sit down, get up, sit down. Yeah. When I start going to other churches, to Pentecostal, mm -hmm. Apostolic, Baptist, mm -hmm. I start saying, "Oh, you can actually sing, and actually, and actually, it's okay to to dance and 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 shout and scream." Like, yeah. oh, okay, and that's why I really start seeing the other types of music that mm -hmm. is on the Christian banner or church banner. Mm -hmm. and you're right. There's a lot of stuff that I'm seeing now. I'm seeing all my favorites who say they grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's their influences, but also, but it goes to you can do it in hip hop. Also, you can do it in dance. Yeah. Oh right? yeah, right. So, like, my brother was um, he was in, going. He's a dancer from St. Louis, and his name is Rod too now. But he danced with Destiny Chow and oh wow, okay, and, the, uh, and just different people in the industry. And his group of friends are dancers. So, I would. I would come home to make music and make beats and stuff like that. But I was also influenced by the fact that he was out there on that stage. And I was like, oh, man, I want to be there. I want to do stuff like that. You know, so um, I would go home and make my my do my church music. But I would do my church music and then I would run home to make the music that I was hearing on the radio, you know. If I heard one certain sound in it, I would try to go home and figure out how to make that sound, not make the whole song, but a right. certain thing that was in it. You know, so and and I realized blues, jazz um was kind of like what I was playing in church. And I grew love for making R and B music out of that. So I did a lot, I worked with a lot of female artists starting off, um, just like local, local artists. And just 
creating melodies and stuff like that. And uh, I wanted to figure out how to rap on it because it felt so good. You know, from there, it just like we used to go to the skating ring in St. Louis and be in the clubs as as teenagers and everybody was getting crunk. I'm like, oh, I want to make people crunk just how I'm crunk right now. So I will go home and make all the little giant type of vibes, yeah, whatever, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. and then we have who's the favorite, who's the best rapper, Jay-Z, Eminem, Nas, yes. Bugs, Biggie, Pac. And then we had this whole discussion with as a family. And then I was like, shoot, man, I'm going to start rapping. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I can do it too. You know what I'm saying? So I, all of it, that's why I said all of it comes from like your environment, your space, um, how you sharing, sharing that with your circle and, um, you know, just being in it, you know, too. So the hip hop is so important to me right now. I'm trying to, I, I, what I like about it is the conscious, I'm a conscious rapper. I like telling stories and I, I love the stories that were told in hip hop um, from the Jay-Z's and Nas and, you know, all uh, from that realm, you know. So I will come home and I take my story and I try to figure out how to break it down and use wordplay and stuff like that. And I And this is where I, I'm like not understanding certain terms and so certain vo vocabulary. So I would grab those words, throw it into songs to learn those words. And so I can strengthen my vocabulary skills, not to be the best rapper, but it was more of a personal thing, you know? Um, but yeah, so. But you know, but you know that in our culture, um, we are good storytellers. Mm -hmm. that's kind of the thing we do yeah. um, our ancestors you know on the plantations would share stories that's what they did you know you don't realize you know the spoken word and on these battle raps came from playing the dozens back in the back in time when people would go back and forth and kind of talk crap to each other it was like all but all for fun like it was all for right. but also there was code in it there was also things in it right it was all there oh yeah i know about that um you know, uh, back in the day, like music was used to to break curses and curse and to um, send a message through yeah. sound, you know, back in those days. And people forget that when you hear a certain 808 in a certain frequency or you hear a certain rhythm was everything back in those days, too. So when you made a certain rhythm, it was you sending a message out there. You know, like, hey, watch out for this and watch out for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so people forget, you know, or we're so we're so ahead now that no one's exposing them or it's exposing the new generation um, or some of the generation those things. But uh, understanding the power of music has the power to um, hypnotize. It has the power to... Um, change your it's changed the way you live you know the way that you think well it's, uh, it's also good unify yeah yep unify. And that's it. Bring yep. together. Mm -hmm. and that's what it was supposed to be used for it was supposed to bring people together you know it was supposed to bring people together unify us tell you what's happening on the block yep yes um, it was the gospel it was really the gospel you know um so it wasn't about all this, you know, <laughs> gun, gun, kill, kill, bye, bye, right, like, right. you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't about that. Um, it was about unity. It's about unity. You know, we're talking about, I was talking to somebody else the other day about um, the early, because I was there for the birth of rap. I was there, so I saw it. And I said those early rap records were about, well, they were, they were basically news stories. Mm -hmm. Here's what's happening in Queens. Yeah, right. Yeah. Here's what's happening in the Bronx. You guys mm -hmm. don't know this in in Montana or in Los Angeles even. Here's what's going on over here. Mm -hmm. well, the, beat, the beats are usually minimal, actually. The beats were minimal. It was all about the delivery and the voice and the actual words. I mean, those all those, you know, Grand Faster Flash, my email song, listen to the lyrics. The Curtis yeah. Blow, listen to the lyrics. Like there's real content in there. For me, I grew up with Gil Scott Heron. So that's my that's my idol. And so he was 
that he was with Rosen when televised, he was talking about all kinds of shit in that song. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm just saying that there's, there's, you're right. It's like, it wasn't, it's almost, it was like preaching. It was testimony. It literally yeah. was testimony. It was testimony. Right? Yep. And um, I have a song I'm getting ready to drop called Tango on October the 7th. Okay. And it's, I even, I talked about DJ Cool Hurts. Oh, yep. Bringing music back into the, it's like I'm going back in time and bringing him back. It was like, it's kind of like a visual, like an art, see visual I'm having, but I'm talking yep. about the industry being as metaphor, at the masquerade of the industry, you know, being covered and being um, led in different places in the industry. But I'm creating this space, showing you, telling you about the the marble floors, the windows, the mirror. How, you know, um, how music can take you to a place too that that can be really scary and that can that can lead you um, the wrong way, you know. But also enlighten you that hey, this is how you tell the story, like. You supposed to educate our people and let them know what's up, like what's going on, um, and how we should, how this, how is this supposed to be, you know? So, uh, tango, we dancing, we're dancing with with people behind the mask. If you don't know, you know, and um, we gotta, we gotta watch it. Hey, this guy just gotta watch it, man. And don't allow money to be the lead, you know, yes. because you can have all the money. We all know you can have all the money in the world, but it's about you. It's not what you're doing that that uh, defines who you are. Like, yeah, I'm a write, I'm a producer, I'm a writer, but I'm a person too. You know, who 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 are you? outside of those things that yeah, we do those things, but who are you, you know? I, well, I, was, I just want to say, um, for me, as we go further in the conversation, uh, some of the acts that taught me you could do hip hop and be conscious and have a message and still party, uh, Sounds of Blackness, Kirk Franklin and the Family, DC mm-hmm. Talk, these are all yeah. groups that were doing stuff that was so outrageous back then. People, I mean, people were fighting over stuff like, how dare you do this? And how can you how can you do a rap and a, a Christian rap? And it's like, but listen to their lyrics. They're mm-hmm. actually Kurt Franklin, DC Talk. They're all talking about stuff that was really good and positive, yet right. you were dancing on a dance floor with them. We're like dancing to it. Right. And that's that was my first, those my first inklings that you can be, you can be more than just the silly stuff for the party. That's just good stuff there. I mean, I come on, I come on, ride the train, love that song. You know, so those they love they like but that, that's right. one section. You know, Daisy Dukes love that song. It's all one section, but there's a whole other section too mm-hmm. that really can bring us all together. And I just got to see that those some of those groups. I was able to see that and go, oh, okay, that's you can do that. Right, right. I was uh, growing up too. Like um, I was around a lot of Christian rappers, and I didn't like write like we wrote different. Like I'm a Christian, but I would write about things that were happening in my life. And I wasn't like like preaching to no one. I was just like telling you what was up. And then I might throw something in there like God said, peace be still or something like that in the midst because it's pulling back from my my upbringing from what I've heard while I was in the church. But I'm connecting the dots with my life with it. People, I had friends that wouldn't write with me because I didn't write full church verses and songs, but it wasn't nothing bad what I was saying. It wasn't negative. It was, it was just, I was just too different with my writing and I wouldn't just preachy, 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 preach and talk people down, you know? And it just, I was just led to kind of do it differently, you know? It's like, no, you got to meet people where they're at. And and you gotta you know, you guys just gotta meet people where they at. You can't just come in their room and think you just gonna change people, you know, or tell people what to do. No, be a good example. 
do the right things, make the right steps, and people will see you're good. And then people can pick what they want to pick from you. You know, um, we all have things that we can learn from, from each other, you know, and that is important. It's so important to me. Yes. Um, so, just a little background a little bit. So, you know, you were, were you born in, born in St. Louis and raised there and then came to California? Born and raised. Okay. And mm -hmm. then you came to California about when? I came to California in 2017. Yeah. Um, I went to school in Oakland, California, oh. Kansas City Art Institute for four years. Um, after I did my schooling, um, my wife met my wife in Oakland. Wow. At the St. Louis, I had two kids. Got we got married, had two kids, um, and then I started to like kind of like experiment um, what it would be like having my own label. So I had all my friends that did different things. I brought them in, like, hey, you want to do this? You can do that. I do this. I make the music. You into marketing? You can do the marketing. Like, we all just having fun, you know? Um, and then it grew, you know? And we were doing things in the community. We was having kids. Um, I later decided to move from St. Louis and go to L.A. because I felt like my dream was bigger than where I was at. Okay. What I wanted... I felt like I needed to go somewhere else to get it. My wife so happened to be from LA. So oh. yeah. So when we moved back to LA, uh, we stayed with her, her parents, okay. not her, her grandmother. And we just stayed for eight months. We grinded out. Um, it wasn't easy, but we had our purpose and we had our expectations what we was going for. And we just, went for a blast. So we was on the grind the second we stepped our foot on the ground. Um, and yeah, so I, that was 2017. 2017. You've been seven years, basically. So yeah, yeah. seven and years Part now. of that was a pandemic, too. Yes. You know, so they, right. Part of that was a pandemic. I mean, like, four of those years yeah. were a pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was, it. you know, I went to every studio here and they turned me down, you know, what, what, what would they say to you? What are sort of things they were saying? Just so people you had home here, like what sort of things they were saying to you? I will go in the studio and they were like, Oh, you too slow for me. You're just too slow. You don't know enough. Um, you don't know enough shortcuts. So we're gonna have to move you on. It didn't matter what type of music I was bringing in. Really? No one took the time to say, Hey, you made this? How did you make it? Right. Or or no one didn't, no one wanted to help. Like, I might not know the board, but you could have been like, hey, right. how about we teach you how to work the board since we know how how uh, dedicated you are to your art and, and to this job and get you up and running, you know? But all the small studios I tried to go for, I didn't get. And after, it's a lot that happened uh, when I moved here. So that's a whole nother. On the show, folks, probably on the show, but yes. Yeah. Yeah, some stuff happened. But I'm just, I just really want to go to the point that, folks, you can come out here with a dream. People are like, man, they want they want the sure thing, I think, sometimes. They want somebody to come in and just be magical, whatever, yeah. that, whatever that means to them. Right. Yeah. And they what they returned was magical, but they wanted somebody to come in really fast and. and yeah. And create that magic that they was hearing too you know um i was i did come down two months prior to being in la um i had some friends that worked in the business um kim burst uh i was introduced to kim burst that was jennifer lopez music creative director I've heard her name before yeah um she was over um black girls rock and um, with BET, and she also was like the start of Beyonce. She was like the one that when Destiny Child came in, she was like, I think she was the music creator of De Destiny Child and was helping to put their band together, yeah. rehearsals and all that. So I had the opportunity to come down and meet her and send the studio, just be in the back with my little daughter, have okay. my daughter. Okay, in, that's right. In the back, you know, and... um. 
along with Renita, that was her assistant. And then um, I stayed and I just kept on a grind, just kept networking, going to meetup groups day and night, day and night, not missing a day. And the, I say the last few weeks I had left, I got a call from her and said, hey, um, do you know how to do um, Melodyne or do you know how to engineer? Let me send me, send me your work. So I sent her my website I created before I left. And she saw that I had a degree and I was into a whole bunch of things. Um, I got my master's in digital film and media. I mean, my bachelor's in digital film and media and my master's in electronic music and corner media. So I think that helped a lot, but also um, showing my portfolio and having it prepared so they could see something. Um, she saw that and she was like, all right, I'm going to send you some files. We need this done by tomorrow. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm ready. Let's go. Okay, right. Sure. Okay. Jumping in. I'm like, all right. So, and then I'm sitting there waiting. And then I get this email and it's all Jennifer Lopez um, vocals, everything. And I was like, what did I just say? Crazy. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> like, I'm in LA and I'm like, J-Lo? I'm like, what? J-Lo? So um, I worked with a guy named Kevin Teasley that was also an engineer and my job was to just vocal engineer. Um, she did a live show and they wanted to get some noise out of it. So I had to clean it up okay. and I had to do it overnight, you know? So I, I did what I could do uh, based off my knowledge, sent it to them and say, good job, move a little bit faster. I was like, cool, I take it. Boom, I continued doing my thing. Next thing you know, got a call to go with Atlantic and Warner um, Brothers on tour. And it was from the same production team. See, I was like, "Wow!" And I did not know these people right. at all. Good. And that's why it's so important that you have a good um, track record and you're showing your work because they had been watching me after that over and over, seeing what I've been doing, you know, and seeing that I'm still engineering, I'm putting up my work, and um, and just the consistency and um, and people don't want to work with somebody that's not easy to work with. It's nothing I learned about the business. Yeah. You can be the best person, the most talented right. person in the world, but if they don't want to, if you're not a good person, they will not deal with you. Yeah. They will put you on the side and get somebody over here true. and teach that person how to do the job. Yeah, they will. And they that will. was me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. And, and ever since then, I've toured um, before I left and came to St. Louis, I was with a person that said, you would never travel around the world. You would never financially um, make it as uh, better than me. And just said some really mean things. It was an older guy that I looked up to, you know what I'm saying? Um, that had experience. And I end up um, taking all that um, pain and purpose and, um, and just pushing forward you know, um, overcoming those doubts that I was having. And I just went forward, you know what I mean? Just went forward. I was like, look, if if God is giving it to me, he going to see me through. And that was my my thing right there. So I was just like, look, I'm going, whatever you want me to do. I had a week to learn how to break down a machine and build it back up, put sessions apart, put it together. I was controlling lights, content, and um, the sound with one click of a button. You started the show, so I was a sh I started the show and ended the shows um, for a band. And I mean, you got thirteen thousand people out there. You right. know, guys that go the way the show is, the way you rehearse it. It's yeah. being filmed on television. It has to go. You know, so through that, man, I've I've. I was able to create a name for myself. Um, my my work expand. I was able to get endorsed that I've never been in. And I had no intentions of doing. That's why your gift will make room for you if you continue doing the right thing, you know what I mean? And continue to push forward, you know? And that's why I want to teach every kid out there that don't give up on your dreams, you know? Um, if you, if there's something that you really passionate about, 
do it. If you can't find the help, do it. Because the help that I gave to myself became my bread and butter that supported the gift that I'm doing now. You know, um, I was going to be an artist, to be a painter. And I end up writing songs in the in the studio in the in the digital film department, you know, instead of editing the the audio to the my films, you know. And then from there, you know, um I spent that time doing that. Um and then controlling whatever I had going on, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's one of those that you're saying everything that I always told the young kids all the time. I'm like, just number one, this is in any field in entertainment. If they don't like you, if you're a troublemaker, you won't work. Like a true mm -hmm. troublemaker. I mean, there's some people out there who work, but like true. If you see some of the same people getting hired all the time, it's because they're on time, they don't make mm -hmm. waves, they do their job, they smile and, and say yes, and they go about their business. And the job gets because everything's about everything's about money and movement, and we don't got time for everybody pussyfooting around. Um, mm -hmm. and, and if you make them people remember how you make them feel. Yep. They do. And that's just that that's I, that's what it is. Oh, you like, oh, Jason here. Yes. I mean, he was great on that last part. Like they really, that's what they think of. And that right. girl who, so you just sat behind and behind the scenes, you were quiet. Like we mm -hmm. said earlier in the show, you were quiet, you watched what was going on, and she remembered you and came to you and said, Can you do blank? Right. So they want to know, also, they want to know who's nearby, who's within reach. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do like 10 Because yeah, you right. got to be available. Yeah. And that was one of the things that I was told before I left too, is that um, if you want to be in this business, you have to be available because work comes and go. And are you going back to live or are you coming back down here to stay? And I was like, oh, I'm coming back down here to stay. <laughs> yes. I'm going to go ahead and get the kids. We gonna... And I packed our car. We left everything and we packed up two cars and w w whatever we can carry. And, um, we drove from St. Louis to LA, and that's how bad we wanted this. Well, you know? So let's, let's let's say it, break that down for a second. So you have two small children. Yes. Wife. Yeah. Um, what makes it? Why are you and your wife working out so well? Do you think, in your opinion, in terms of these big life changes and being in entertainment? So, so you guys are working out very well. So, what do you think is one of the keys to you guys working out really well? Um, I think uh, most definitely we understand each other and we met ourselves, met each other at a place where we're doing what we're doing now. Like my wife met me while I was in um, I getting my master's in music. And so I would often invite her there and she would just see it. So she fell in love with what I was doing. She was inspired, but um, also too, just the way that we carry ourselves every day, um, the way that we socialize with people, and we both work with each other. So we help each other. So when she's going to school, I'm helping her, you know, with her, her work. Or if she's if she's working on a website, I'm giving her ideas and things of my knowledge. And so we just decided to work with each other. Um, and we love what we both are doing. I just, and we've, and, and we, we're friends, you know? We friends, we know each other. We we stay with each other every day. We have kids. Like we're building a future for our family. No, it's no sense of bumping heads. We it's it. If she has a goal, how can we support each other? And we've always been like that. So I think um, our upbringing too, our story, the way that we grew up, has a lot to do with how we carry ourselves. There's things that she experienced that I've never experienced and vice versa. Um, she grew up in Mexico and she also grew up in LA. And so she experienced things w way different than, than me. So I have a deep understanding of how she see things and she understands how I see things. Um, but uh, we just want to see each other make it, you know, We'll see each other make it. Yeah. So I think that has, and we both work with kids. 
I think that's the that's one of the main things. Like I found her as a nanny. She was a nanny. She had the, a little girl. Um, and we both um worked as behavior therapists in St. Louis. Okay. So we saw after, you know, kids with disability. Um, we worked in the psych unit, self-harm unit, um, detention kids, and to teach them social skills and things to get them through, you know, get them through their, their lives, you know, or just to be there when nobody wasn't there. So we worked in a residential space uh, for four, three to four years. And now we're together at a school doing the same thing um, as educators, educating and mentoring the kids. Um, so we're, like I'm saying, like we're in it together and we're with each other. Um, but a lot of it comes a deep understanding of who we are and and we we know how to make each other happy you know we're responsible for that you know if if i need to be, make sure that i'm happy and she's happy so we can you know make sure our kids are in, in good hands now are your kids so we're getting musical stuff you say oh you say that again kids are your actual kids my your actual, kids are helping your yeah, actual yeah, yeah. children yeah my actual kids are they yeah. are they so musical musical abilities oh yeah so my daughter is she's been dancing she's a dancer and she's she's an artist so she spends a lot of time creating art and okay. making money off our art she's 11 oh. years old. Oh, she's, she's 11 years old go girl. okay go on girl okay <laughs> so, right. uh, she started last year um putting artwork up and she was like, oh, people are buying artwork from me. And she had made like a hundred dollars. Okay, you know, that's, that's good. She'll be almost there. that much sometimes in our artwork. So that's good. And and she's in, even picking up behind her mom and seeing at the kids. Like she was with her mom yesterday, um, a nanny in the family with her. And she got paid doing that. And she loves, she said she loved doing that too. Okay, okay. My son, he started. My son is in my beat. They both in my beat class, actually. Okay. Um, so they both know how to make beats. My son, he makes beats the most. Wow. Uh, but he played drums, and he um, and um, he had and he's learning violin this year. So he has in class he's playing violin this year. So, so, so for you, I'm, so are you kind of like? sit on the sidelines observing what they gravitate towards and then kind of go there. Exactly. Okay. I don't, I don't put nut, nothing on them. You know, they pick it up, they pick it up. Like my son picked up the beat, his tablet and started making beats. Okay. I ain't say, I ain't telling him to go make beats. Yeah. He picked it up and he started making it. So I'm like, okay, let me see what you try to do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let me hear that beat. And then here you go. Oh. Check out this new beat I made. I was like, oh, okay. He said, "What? Well, I got this and this and that. And then, you know, he had asked me what I think. And then I just tell him what I think. I'll take this layer out right here. You know, put that over there. See what that sounds like. Oh, okay. That sounds better. I like that. Yeah. So I try to like not put any pressure on that because I didn't have nobody over my shoulder telling me, hey, you're doing this wrong or this doesn't right. sound right. right. You, sometimes you got to get a little messy to kind of figure out everything like oh, okay i know how to make this work now because i messed up here and i had to fix it you know or i used to wrong i moved it two bars too soon or this ain't the right key you know but i think um all that comes from them just being in it you know um composing music night and day writing songs while i'm in the car like oh i got a hook and I'm doing the hook in the car. And then my kids are joining in like, oh, dad, you should say this. You know, like, um, so it's now became like a family business, you know, family business. And um, and they get paid to do what, what they what they want to do, too. So if they're doing something, they say, hey, dad, I want to join. Then I just let them join, you know. And they got their own things they do, their own sports. My son likes soccer. My daughter likes volleyball. They're on the team. That's what they do. Uh, but when they come home, 
it's like they ready to work. And their first thing is the arts. Now, where, are they in one of your videos? I thought I saw your kids in a video. Yes. 80% of the time, my kids are in my video. I thought I remember seeing one of your videos. I think they yeah. like kids. Sure. Like this. Um, they're in the video like this. Yeah, so, thank you. I think I saw yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, there, let's see, like this, the one I just dropped um, yesterday, on and on, they're in that That's video. Um, I have one called uh, Trayvon Martin, No More Guns. Uh, my daughter is in that one when she was a baby. Oh, wow. Okay. Keep on keeping on. My son and daughter is in that too. So, um, I often think about what I'm leaving behind too. And I leave, I'm leaving messages for my, my kids. Yes. You know, I'm leaving yes. um, messages of encouragement and tell them how to solve problems through my music. So when I'm writing, I'm not just writing just to be, uh, just to tell you a story, but I'm also leaving messages. Yeah. Makes sense. You know? Like that. that yeah. makes sense. Um, did you did I read correctly? Did you, did you have you have you had a Grammy nomination? Yeah, so I uh, composed for a spoken word um, album. I did two spoken word albums, and one of the songs got picked to be in the nomination. Um, so I was a contender of the Grammys wow. last year. So I, I feel mean, I feel like man, that's the ultimate honor for music. It felt so good. Like you go open up the Billboard magazine and your name is right there. A trip. Oh my God. And I'm going into BMI. That was BMI this year and they still got the magazine there. And it was like a year ago. And I'm like, yo, they just sharing this to all people I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so now my name is in places and people are saying my name and I don't know who they are. And, and that's totally, that that's fine with me, you know, but now I, I'm, it felt good, bro. It just felt good, like just working so hard and and looking at this stuff like over years, over, and you it, you never know how it's coming. You never know how it's going to happen. It's just all your hard work just kind of like pays off, you know? Like this girl came to me, this lady came to me and said, hey, I was really, I really like you as a person, as a person. Um, the energy in the studio was so good. I am led to come to you to finish my project. Would you help me finish my project? And I was like, of course I will. She said, okay, cool. I got a little sponsor, some people that can help me push it. And I was like, let's just go, let's just get it done. I, you know, I'm feeling it too, you know? And it, go, it works both ways. I was feeling her vibe. Um, I try to make sure that I'm in a space where I had there's peace and no confusion, you know, and that we can creatively have fun, you know. And so, yep, did that last year. She submitted to a lot of films, um, festivals, so because she took one of the songs and created a um, animated uh, animation video wow. okay. to submit. So when she submitted it. It got picked up by um, what's there Warner Brothers Discovery. Oh, okay, so we kids or whatever, yeah. And like the the film district or agency out here in LA, and through that we was qualified to sign up for the Grammys, and so she signed up for the Grammys. She got entered in um, as a um, as a contender, which means that I was a contender too. Yeah. So that's how I see how it worked. Like I wasn't signed up with the Grammys, but oh yeah, oh yeah, got me in that position. I love so, it. I do. I love it. Um, I am a new fan, so I I am wishing you all the success. I mean, I'm gonna be on the sidelines watching, cheering you on. You're welcome back anytime on the show. I mean, yes, Tango coming out on October seventh. We'll make sure we'll push that out there so folks they can hear it. But I'm just I'm rooting for you. So I'm, I think it's gonna be it's, it's thank amazing. you. It's amazing. Thank you. Um, and I gotta get one of your hoodies. I was looking for his for his mind of the noise. I like the hoodies; they're cute. I think yeah. the Thank you. Yeah, um, the hoodies I started after the tour. Um, when the pandemic hit, 
we decided to go ahead and start launching Mind of the Noise. And um, I'm wearing one of my my older ones right here. I can't let it go. So yeah. it's a little <laughs> thing, but you know. <laughs> they look comfortable. They do look comfortable. But it's comfortable, um, though. Like, when you got something comfortable, it's just hard to let go. Yes. Um, but, yeah, I started. That's how Mind of Noise. I went ahead and got it licensed in the city and started pushing it and um, start, you know, venturing off into education uh, with beat school and so forth. So where can they find you? They want to find I'll put it. I'll put up the links below, of course, the video. But where can they find you? You can say it out loud to folks where they can find you. Um, you can find me at mindofthenoise.com. Um, everything that you want to know about the press, about beat school, um, about my history and what I have dropping, you can find it there. Instagram, Jason D underscore Harris. That's where you can find me on Instagram. And you can also find Mind of the Noise on Instagram at Mind of the Noise. I'm following on all those. I just I just started following you today. Uh, oh. So he is out there. Follow him. Follow him. Follow him. See what he's doing. Stream his music. Check out what's going on. Watch the videos. He wants the, needs the, the views, the likes, the downloads, all that stuff. This is somebody who's right. positive. Something positive. Hey. Yes. Positive. I love it. Uh, I'm James R. Junior's Extra Connections. We're on Facebook. Uh, JLJ videos on everything you can think of, just about uh, and me. I'm everywhere also. Um, but my show is all about connection, and so that's why I talk to people like this. We have we have big connections. See what they're doing, what I'm doing, what we're all doing. Everything that someone does affects everyone else, whether you believe it or not. It just does, and I believe that wholeheartedly. And secondly, I believe in supporting the arts in schools, the arts in communities. Um, it has shown that any kind of art, that's, that's dance, music, painting, drawing, whatever kind of arts, acting, helps with kids with uh, cognitive skills in math and in science and in English and in history. Um, gives folks things to do, too. Idle hands are crazy. So it gives folks things to do. Um, and there are a lot of kids out there actually have these natural abilities that yes. no one's developing. So I support so support. Support any kind of measures, any kind of bills, any kind of things when it comes to and people like him, get him into your schools, the B school, yeah, so you can start helping these kids develop these natural skills to be actually productive human beings. And I love entertainment. Any more entertainment? Sure. Let's get some more stuff out there. I love it. And I am James Hodge Jr. I'll talk to you next time.